Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and more. It's November week one and so time for a new mood board and this is the mood board that Lainey, Elaine Gardner in the Facebook group has put together for us for this month. Lainey, I just want to say a huge thank you to, for putting these mood boards to, together for me. Um, you've done a fantastic job um, and I really do appreciate it. Um, but these are the images, so we've got um, a whimsical moon um, with a little boy um, reading under the moonlight really really like like that um, we've also got um, an owl here in the night sky sitting on a branch then we've got the castle with all the greys. I mean, it could be the colour scheme that you're inspired by by here. Um, and then we've got um, a, a dandelion. Um, so those are the images. And again, um, as in previous weeks uh, or previous months, I should say, interpret this in any way you like. Either take inspiration from the images, just the overall mood of the, the, the mood board, the colour scheme. Interpret it however you like. Now I'm just going to move my hands out of the way for a second for anybody who wants to take a screenshot to use as reference. Now I'm going to be using black mixed media paper today. Um, I'm going to do an art journal page, a really quick and simple one hopefully. Um, my mixed media paper measures um, seven by seven and a half inches and this is the Faber-Castell mixed media pad. Um, this is 250 GSM paper. Now I'm going to start off by doing some embossing. I've used my two and a half inch um, circle punch just to cut a circle out of this cardstock. Um, and I'm going to use my emboss it um, dabber. I want to use some embossing powder um, and I'm using the dabber this time. It's exactly the same as the ink pads, just in dabber form. Um, I've made myself a mark here where I want to position um, my card and I'm just going to make a circle here. So I'm just going to dab it on. I'm going to smooth it around the edges so that um, the embossing ink doesn't bleed under underneath and just fill this in. You don't need a huge amount of ink. I just want to cover the whole of that circle. So there we go. That should um, do it. And then let me just put the lid back on. I've got some white embossing powder here. Um, what make is, is this? Um, Creative expressions I couldn't see because of course it's covered up by the price tag. I've got a piece of paper underneath me just to catch all the excess and I'm just going to tip some on and heat set this with my heat tool. So there we go, we'll top up, tap off all the excess and I'm just going to heat set this with my heat tool. So my embossing powder um, is now set and cooled down and I want to use some um, of the Distress Oxide sprays to create my background. Now these are really, really messy. So I've got a shoe box um, and I've also um, got a piece of um, A3 mixed media paper here just to put at the back, just to stop this um, going everywhere. Let me just see if I can get this um, in frame. I've got too many things on my desk. Hang on, let me just move my water bottle and shift things around there we go that will do um, I'm going to start off with the distress oxide um, in iced spruce let me just move that back um, a bit just so that I've got room to spray and I'm just going to spray that all over the mixed media paper like like that then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the purple this is wilted violet and of course this um, embossing circle here is acting as a resist so the inks won't actually stick to it so we'll have some of um, that purple and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the peacock feathers just look how nice those colours look together isn't that just gorgeous I love that mix and I'm just going to heat set this now with my heat tool now I know that you're supposed to spray these with water to get the oxidisation process going but I'm not going to because I just absolutely love that as it is but the one thing I am going to do is just take away the ink from my moon. There we go. Let's brighten, brighten that up. I just love that background, that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, now I 
absolutely love all the multicolors that I've got going on here and I think I'm going to add some splatters so I'm going to take the um, individual tops off um, let's just grab a paintbrush this one here should should do and I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in and I'm just going to add a few extra splatters with each of the colors just to you know add a bit more color to my background there we go I always say to myself don't go too mad and you know I just can't help myself I'm going to give that a quick dry before I do the same with the other two colors so I'm going to do the same with the purple. This is Wilted um, Violet. I think I'm going to skip the grey. I haven't quite decided. I do want to add some white though as well. You see that just lifts it. That's just so beautiful. And because I'm using the same colours that I've already used, nothing is getting too busy. But doesn't that look gorgeous um, on the black background? You just get a completely different effect to using oxides on, on white love that and I might see if I can keep these um, speckles that um, are on the moon they might wipe off I don't know I'm going to spray this with some spray uh, fixative in a minute let's try it with some ice spruce um, and then as I say I want to come in um, with some white as well and I think I'll use gouache for that Yep, that was the right thing to do. And then finally, I just want to do the same thing with gouache. Um, I've just put out a really tiny amount of the Arteza gouache and I've mixed it with um, some water and I'm going to tap that on as well. Um, this would just be a bit more opaque than using regular paint. I hope so anyway. Beautiful. Now before I do anything else to this gorgeous page, just look how pretty that is. I'm going to take it outside and spray it with some pastel fixative um, just because we all know that the Distress Oxides are water reactive and I just want to fix um, this really pretty pattern um, in place. Um, it's prone to getting finger marks on it um, so I'm going to use the Frisk Pastel Fixative and I'm going to give that two coats. Now I've been and sprayed um, my page and as you can see the fixative hasn't worked um, on the embossing which has just resisted the fixative as well so I'm just going to simply rub that off. I've still got some of the texture um, left behind which is really really pretty. So let me try and explain what I want to do with my focal image. I'm going to stamp using this stencil here, the bird image. I've got Louis in here with me, um, so you can probably hear him in the background. But ideally, I would like an owl as the focal image. Now, I'm not sure how well this would stamp directly onto the embossing powder. So but, um, this will fit over the top if I stamp it out separately. So I'm going to stencil this on first with the bird so that if the owl doesn't work, um, I've got an alternative. Now I don't want this branch here so I am going to mask it off with a piece of um, masking tape here. We'll do it in two separate um, pieces. He's just been screaming to come into my craft room and now it looks as if he's trying to get back out again. Let me just go and let him out. So that's covered up that branch um, and I'm going to stamp using some black gesso which is really nice and, and flat and will give me good coverage. So I'm just going to use a makeup sponge. You do not want to use too much paint when you're um, stamping um, like this with a, through a stencil because it will just bleed underneath. So I'm just going to tap all the way over like this holding my stencil firmly in place so that um, I don't I don't move it um, if we do get any seepage underneath then we can always touch it up afterwards it's not a big deal but if I can avoid it then I will so let's have a go at embossing the owl so that I can see which image I prefer this is just plain smooth cardstock um, so hopefully I will get um, a nice crisp image um, and I'm just using my embossing stamp pad um, this time so I'm going to press down nice and firmly see if I can get a nice crisp image hold it down for a second or two just for that embossing ink to grab 
and then lift it up and keep your fingers crossed and then I'm going to use black embossing powder for the image um, so you can't see anything at the moment but um, hopefully you will in a second or two and there we go so I just need to brush off all the extra bits and pieces of embossing powder that have accumulated around the edges and I'm just going to use a paintbrush for that now I was halfway through brushing off all the extra bits and I thought what on earth am I doing I'm going to fussy cut it out anyway so I'm just going to heat set this with my heat tool so I've set the embossing powder and fussy cut the owl out and I'm just going to go around the edges just with some archival ink just to get rid of, rid of any of the white areas um, because you know this was a bit tricky um, to cut so this will hide any areas that I haven't quite cut maybe as neatly as I would like to have done and let's have a look and see how it looks because I may or may not use this owl anyway let's put that over there and um, so bring my page back and which do we like best do we like the bird or do we like the owl it's got to be the owl hasn't it yes I think it's got to be um, the owl what do you think so I'm really happy with how that's um, looking so far but I just want to add a tree um, just to the left hand side here um, so let's have a look and see what I can do I've got an angled brush and I'm going to use gesso um, again how do I want to do this um, right start off with a thin tree because I can always make it wider if I if I want to not too straight fill this in and I can always use, um, I'm painting myself here as well, I can always use a more detailed paintbrush just to tidy up the um, edges as well. So how does, how does that look? I think I want to alter the shape of it slightly. Um, maybe have it thickening towards the bottom so I am going to fiddle around with this until I'm, I'm happy um, with the shape of my tree now I ended up parking this last night because Steve needed a lift into town um, and when I got back I couldn't be bothered to do any more but I'm looking at this this morning and I just felt that it needed a halo around the um, moon so I'm just using a chalk pastel um, to do that um, because I don't want something too intense I want sort of that dreamy look um, and I know that I'm going over the, the um, branches and things but that doesn't matter because I can add more more black um, to that <sighs> just um, but I don't know I just I wish that I'd done the moon a little bit bigger but um, but I didn't um, and I don't want to run the risk of um, going over it with more embossing powder in case it doesn't work now I think that looks better to me I'm just going to smudge it out a bit more because I want it to look really dreamy which is why I'm using um, chalk pastels and I'm going to have to go and seal this as well I want to really sort of feather it out um, to the outside there we go I think I'm liking liking that that looks better um, right I'm going to uh, give that a coat of spray fixative so that's had a coat of spray fixative I can't believe what a big difference that has made I'm really pleased with that um, now my um, tree trunk needs to be wider let me just move my owl out of the way um, I've got my black gesso um, again here I've um, just sprayed a bit of water just to thin it um, down a bit I think I need a bit more I'm just wor uh, working out of the lid of the gesso um, here and I'm just going to play around with my tree trunk and then I need to add some more branches and also thicken um, the branch that's already there as well um, just to make it look a bit more a bit more tree like what how how do I want this to go how the uh, the reason um, that I'm doing it a bit at a time is that you can always make things wider but of course if you do it too wide to start off with then you can't take it um, away so I'm just going to do this a bit um, at a time until I'm happy with it you see that looks better to me um, then I want to um, I don't like the shape let me just add a bit of, of water there to my paintbrush I don't like the shape of this branch here so I'm just going to fill fill this in um, it's too thin um, compared to the rest of the the tree so we can just add some details here 
I've also got um, a fine detail brush to add some branches coming off it. So I shall do this off camera, I think, because um, you know this might be a bit boring. I'm just showing you how I'm, I'm doing it. Um, so I've got my fine detail brush. This is one of the Arteza ones that, um, that they sent me. And so I'm just going to you know, shape, shape these. We can have some branches coming off like, like this, just to make it um, more realistic. So I'm just going to carry on playing until I'm happy with the way it looks. So this is getting there. I really like the way that that looks. Um, I'll fill this area in here once it's all dry because I can go over it with my stencil. Um, but I feel as if I want some more branches coming off the tree. So let's just tackle this top one. I'm using a slightly thicker brush and how do I want that to go? Um, don't overthink it Nina, just go for it. Something like, something like this and we can have some branches coming off um, and then some some thinner ones so I'm just going to continue playing um, again can have some thinner ones whoops that wasn't very that wasn't very good we can fill that back in and so I'm just going to um, continue playing so here's my finished art journal page glued into my journal. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I continued adding my branches and you can see that um, I've added a few more splatters as well, mainly to cover up um, a splodge that ended up here. My paintbrush with all the black gesso on it rolled over the page and I quickly wiped most of it away, but um, of course it left its mark. Um, so I patched it up using my chalk pastels actually and that's pretty good. Um, and then I just added some more splatters manually just dipping the um, end of the um, nozzle um, onto the, the the page just to try and disguise it and blend everything in and I'm really happy with that I actually like the extra brightness that's added um, I've added some black soot distress ink as well to frame my page around the edge of it um, I'm not going to add a quote because I just like it as it is now let me go and turn the overhead light off and I'll remind you of the mood board so here's the mood board I'll keep my hands out of the way so that if you want to take a screenshot for reference you can do but feel free to interpret the mood board in any way you like so I hope you like how I decided to um, interpret it this week and as I said at the beginning thanks again Lainey for putting these together for us um, and a huge thank you to the other um, admins in the Facebook group as well because you know they comment on all the videos they do so much work behind the scenes and I could not do it without them and you know their help is very very much appreciated um, so if you enjoyed the video this week as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below and I look forward to seeing um, how everybody else decides to interpret the mood board this month take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now